This tip shows you how to pass a temp table that contains an ABL object from an ABL client to the app server. Let's see how easy it is to pass a temp table with an object field. Here, an ABL client defines a temp table, TT1, with a field PLO1, which is an instance of progress.lang.object. This built-in class is serializable by default, so I don't need to make any change to it to pass it as a parameter. The server code contains a similar temp table with the same progress.lang.object field. That temp table will store the input parameter passed from the ABL client. Now let's create a more complicated data object. Building on the original example, instead of adding a simple instance of a progress.lang.object in the table, Use the cast function to cast an object reference to myTT, a subclass of progress.lang.object. This increases the options available to you when you pass objects between ABL clients and app servers. The myTT subclass must be explicitly marked as serializable to be marshaled between ABL clients and the app server. This class contains a second temp table, which contains another progress.lang.object instance. A new class is placed in the first row of the second temp table. In order to guarantee that this will be marshaled with the rest of the objects, it must be marked as serializable. Failing to do so will result in missing data. Let's go to the developer studio to run the sample. Here's the client code. And here's the temp table definition. The main block creates the temp table, assigns the string, and creates the instance. The cast function calls the custom method createMyTT to set PLO1 to an instance of our user defined subclass. The class definition includes the keyword serializable, so it can be marshaled between ABL clients and the app server. The createMyTT method creates a second temp table with an integer and an object field. An instance of the user defined class of class1 is created. For class 1 to pass between ABL clients and the app server, it must be serializable, which it is. The class is very simple, with a single public string shown here. Returning to client.p, the first temp table is passed as an input parameter. In the server code, a similar temp table is defined to store what is passed from the client. From this point, it is up to the individual developer to decide what they will do with the object that is passed. For this demonstration, I'll write a message to the log and show that new instances can be cast to PLO1. Before testing the code, it's important to verify that the working directory is set to the location of the server code. Using OpenEdge Management, navigate to the configuration settings for AS Broker 1 and verify that the working directory is set correctly. From the client program, select Run. The temp table is passed, and a message reminds us to look in the log file for the messages that were displayed on the server. Select AS Broker 1, and locate the log file viewer of servers to verify that the messages were able to process the temp table data. If you're working with complex data and relationships, you can pass a pro data set using temp tables like these. When creating new classes, the serializable option has been added to Developer Studio. To reduce unnecessary and accidental passing of objects, subclasses do not inherit the serializable option by default. Passing objects between ABL clients and app servers is extra traffic on the wire, and programmers should consciously choose to serialize only those objects that are necessary for their applications. This completes our look at how to pass a temp table that contains an ABL object from an ABL client to the app server.